Hi, uh, my name is Shesha Srinivasamurthy, and today I will be talking about biologically inspired platooning for autonomous vehicles. Brief agenda, uh, what is platooning and why platooning, Dif its types, and our main contribution, which is biologically inspired platooning, a short demo, and preliminary results. So what is platooning? According to US Department of Transportation, platooning is a coordinated operation of two or more vehicles via cooperative adaptive cruise control, or as Mid-American Association of Transportation officials would define it, it's a practice of electronically coupling multiple devices in order to significantly reduce the gaps between the vehicles. So what does this reduction in gap achieve us or give us? It gives us fuel efficiency because when the gap reduces, it reduces the air drag, which improves the fuel efficiency and also reduces carbon footprint. It also improves road capacity. And Federal Highway Authority reported around 5,000 fatal truck crashes in 2018. And the major reason for these crashes are driver fatigue and distraction. And when we are dealing with platooning, there is some degree of automation involved, which will reduce the driver's fatigue. So it will improve the safety. Coming to automation, the Society of Automotive Engineers have defined six levels of automation, zero being the least, five being the highest. And for autonomous platooning, we need at least level four automation, wherein the human drivers will relinquish their control when they are joining the platoon. And once the vehicle is in platoon, it is autonomous. Platooning can happen either on freeways or in cities. When you are dealing with city roads, there is an additional challenge because of the traffic signals and the traffic rules. So for that, the vehicles have to constantly communicate and there is a higher level of interaction uh, with the infrastructure. So in this work, we focus on freeways and the platoons can happen either as an offline process or during in the address of the freeways or autonomously during the trip itself. If it is, if it happens autonomously during the trip, then it has to support some of the basic maneuvers, let's such as joining the platoon, exiting from the platoon, changing lanes, or split, uh, splitting the, uh, the platoon, and also merging of platoons when the lane merges too, right? So depending upon where these maneuvers happen, it can be classified as either centralized or decentralized or in a de decentralized, it can be deliberate or emergent. We'll go into little bit details about these in the forthcoming slides. The centralized platooning is characterized by the presence of a leader and generally it will be the first vehicle, but need not be. And this has got a lot of uh, some of the issues or it has got disadvantages, which is it's a single point of failure, serialization, and also a shorter platoon length because the first vehicle has to communicate with the last vehicle and the longer the platoon, they introduce communication delays because of the higher packet drops and retransmission. These issues are mitigated by the use of decentralized system. And in general, the objectives or the maneuvers are first identified and the messages required for those maneuvers are developed. This is a typical top-down approach. An alternative method is inspired by nature, which is a bottom-up approach called the emergent behavior. So our platooning system is motivated by termites, which are very sensitive to environmental changes. And whenever they sense the change, they mix the dirt around them, and then they will, um, uh, uh, which contains a chemical called pheromone and deposit at the place where they sense the change. And if any other termite find a pheromone soaked uh, dirt around them, and they will do the same. So these are the simple rules they for each of each termites follow. And this kind of indirect interaction is called stigmergy. And you can see that there is no supervisor supervising their activity, but every action happens at the local level. And with just local interaction, a global behavior emerges, which is a complex termite mound being built. This is called an emergent system. And in nature, pheromones naturally fade due to evaporation if it is not constantly replenished. So drawing parallels with emergent platooning, the way each vehicle in our system broadcast their state, which includes position, ID, which, is a, which can be a win number, and also 
of the uh, global unique platoon id which is a uuid and most of their communication happens indirectly without direct communication which is drawing parallels with the stigmergy and each vehicle uses gap pheromone messages from two of its predecessors or keep track with two mes uh, all the messages from two of its predecessors and a successor using this information using this information it is it uh, each vehicle calculates the speed of the two predecessors and also intervehicular gap and this speed is used to adjust its own speed the uh, speed of the two predecessors is used to adjust its own speed how the position is used in order to determine the speed is given at the right hand bottom corner i uh, uh, and i'm not going to uh, go deeper into those equations in, in the interest of time and the pheromones are just the reciprocal of the gap and we can see that the rate at which the predecessor pheromone fades is different or significantly higher than the successor pheromone this is to prevent the exiting vehicle's predecessor to prematurely establish itself as a tail or the last member of the platoon and give a chance for the exiting vehicle's follower to catch up right so that is why there is a difference in the rate at which they fade so this is very similar to how pheromones fade in nature so we can see that we drew parallels with uh, stigmergy and we drew with uh, pheromones fading and now coming to rules similar to how uh, each termite followed some rules so we follow the speed rule to maintain the speed and for example we use the catch up rule to for the uh, uh, for the vehicles to catch up say for example if the vehicle exits then there is no communication that happens between the vehicles but just because of the vehicle exited it it is not uh, trans it is not transmitting any more pheromone messages so the actual pheromone value falls below a threshold and the vehicles catch up right so with just local interactions a global uh, a behavior the uh, you know an exit maneuver behavior emerged similarly we used the uh, used the uh, tail rule in order to uh, make sure that uh, uh, to establish itself as a tail member or similarly the first member and lastly and uh, we used the alignment rule for uh, like whenever the lateral distance between itself and the predecessor goes beyond a threshold then the vehicle aligns itself say for example where the first vehicle changes its lane because of the alignment rule the second vehicle changes and it's followed by third and so on and so forth so with just without any without having any workflow we are now having a behavior which is the lane change behavior which is emerging right so why do we have to go with emergent systems first because uh, first one of the reasons is lower maneuver time so we can see that the emergent system is much faster when compared to uh, a centralized system or a deliberate system when coming to when, when it comes to exit maneuver and also as i noted earlier in my previous slide that it does not require any explicit message exchange or a workflow to be implemented and the behavior or the maneuver emerges from you know by just what you are following the basic rules so it becomes less complex so that so that is the reason to go with emergent system now we did some experiment using uh, plexi which is an extension to veins and which uses sumo a traffic simulator and uh, which uh, and sumo uses omnet to uh, simulate the uh, every vehicle as a mobile node and plexi provides a centralized joint maneuver and we extended plexi with a centralized exit uh, maneuver and also sumo also provides a leader predecessor controller which is a centralized controller and in order to adjust its speed and we uh, extended it with two predecessor controller by using the information of the just two of its predecessors so that it can become a decentralized rather than being a centralized system and we evaluate uh, uh, with 20 vehicles uh, join and exit maneuvers and also we compare our emergent system against the centralized system now our performance metric is maneuver latency where the joint maneuver latency is defined as the time between the vehicle entering the system and being a part of the platoon and the maneuver latency of exit is defined as the time its intention the vehicle's intention to exit and not being a part of the platoon now i have i have a brief demo 
uh, which will all while doing so, I will also explain the uh, experimental setup. So we can see this is a, a, a simulation in uh, Plexi or uh, uh, using Plexi. So we can see that every every two seconds a vehicle is entering the system, and the second vehicle is now catching up with the leader. And now, uh, when the leader is coordinating its maneuver to join the platoon, if the second vehicle sends its uh, uh, interest to join the platoon, the leader will explicitly reject it, saying that because it's in the middle of the platoon. So there is a serialization. So, so on and so forth, every vehicle will join the platoon. Like we have, I have just have five vehicles in the interest of time instead of 20. And once all the vehicles join the platoon, all of, all of all the vehicles, but for the first and the last vehicle will show their intention to exit uh, at which at, at, at that point they will all turn blue and serially they, uh, they exit the platoon and once they exit the platoon, they turn yellow. So we can see that it happens at around 60 seconds. Now it's almost time. Okay, it, so all the vehicle exited and now the, the last vehicle will now communicate with the first vehicle that it has exited and during which time it has said that it is going to exit and now they all caught up and now it's a platoon of two vehicles. Similarly, in emergent system also, it does exactly the same thing. And all five vehicles will try to uh, uh, communicate, uh, uh, will see the, the first vehicle will see that there is no pheromone, so it is going to catch up. And once it is nearing the, the first vehicle, then it will send some pheromones. So it will, uh, it will do a join maneuver. And similarly, the second uh, and third and fourth and fifth. And once all five vehicles are there in the platoon, the exit maneuver is, is instantaneous because it doesn't have to communicate with any of the any vehicles and immediately they all, all uh, change their lanes. And this happens at around 45 seconds, which we can see that you know, it is much faster when compared to the centralized system, right? So it's almost time. So now we can see, we don't see, we will not even notice the blue, it, the vehicles turning blue. So they all changed and now the vehicles have exited. And because there was a decrease or a decrease in pheromone value, the, the last vehicle caught up with the first vehicle. So, so we have an emergent behavior that, which emerged from local interaction. So this is our preliminary results where we, so we see that the last in a centralized system, oh, okay, I need to talk about the back off. So whenever there is, whenever the leader will reject its, reject the uh, request from one of its, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for one of the vehicle, the vehicle will actually do a back off. They say, say it, it waits for random amount of time, um, random amount of time before it can retry. So it constantly retries after some back off. So the amount of time it takes for the last vehicle to join in case of centralized system is around 126 seconds. Compared to emergent, it is 83 seconds, 35% faster. The reason for that is serialization at the leader as well as the back off. We tried different uh, uh, you know, back off values. Any value less than three seconds would make, make the number of retries so, so much that it will become almost, uh, the leader will be constantly uh, uh, trying out these, uh, uh, you know, tr uh, 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 trying to reject for all the 20 vehicles. So three seconds was kind of optimal for, three, uh, for 20 vehicles. And if as and when we increase the back off, so the amount of time it uh, for the last vehicle to join significantly increased. So as we can see, so for our uh, for our experiment, we chose three seconds. And similarly, when we are dealing with multi-vehicle exit, simultaneous exits, the centralized system took 2.5 seconds, whereas the emergent system is instantaneous. And more out to the point, there is no explicit workflow that was required. So it is it will become less complex which is very important. And now coming to concluding my talk, what we show, what, what I showed was a novel emergent based platooning. And I demonstrated that on a real vehicular simulator. And the, uh, according to our experiments, the preliminary results are very promising for emergent system. And there are a lot of future work, a lot, lot, lot of things that had to be completed. For example, I need to compare with the deliberate uh, decentralized system. Additional maneuvers should be needs to be uh, evaluated, and also we just use the tail. Uh, you know, uh, merging at the tail as our joining strategy. There are a head and uh, middle uh, joining strategies. 
uh, I mean, uh, joiner and the platoon being in different lanes, simultaneous multi-vehicle joints, and having obstacles uh, uh, during the maneuvers, all these needs to be addressed. So that is, that is in our roadmap of our future work. Thank you for listening.